All right, everyone. I'd like to now officially welcome you to Learning Opportunities for VISTA Service and Beyond. I'm Jessica Birch. And I'm Patrick Trano. And we're coming to you from AmeriCorps VISTA headquarters in D.C. Um, we're also assisted by my colleague Eric Powell here with the VISTA Training Unit, as well as Scott Weinrobe from Education Northwest. You'll see them in the chat and Q&A to assist you throughout this presentation. Um, and so we thank them for their assistance. Um, Patrick. Well, let me say thank you to all of you who have been posting to the chat question about the goal you hope to accomplish during your year of service. Um, let's check some of them out. What, yeah. what do we have here? So Sarah here says my goal is to increase opioid awareness and build capacity for my program. Fantastic. We were just talking about that this afternoon. Let's take a look here. Um, Jessica Bradford, she said, my goal is to bring more funding and community partnerships to the opioid recovery program I'm serving at and to develop my professional skills in resource development. Excellent. There's a lot of things. I didn't just, that's like randomly that I picked two opioid projects, but there's a lot of things about bringing more funding, um, creating an understanding in the community, um, and have it translate to kindness, understanding, and compassion in all areas of my daily life. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. It's all positive, right? It's positive. Yep. And I have to say, it's just great to see positive professional goals and also recognizing, you know, that you're commenting on the ways that you want to grow as well as fulfill the, the duties of your VISTA assignment. So you may have joined VISTA to become involved in anti-poverty causes or to learn about nonprofit management. Perhaps you, you saw an opportunity to become a better public speaker or to help a specific community that's meaningful to you. This session is going to show you how to make the most out of your year of service so that while you're building capacity in, their, in your community, you're also building your own capacity. Um, the VISTA program offers a range of resources to support your professional development and your personal development, so we want to let you know what those resources are. Um, in this session, we're going to identify ways that you can build your skills to help you in your service and point you to resources to make it happen. Um, during your orientation, um, and maybe when you've reviewed some of those in-service courses um, on the VISTA campus, you learn some of the basics about your VISTA assignment. Um, you may have even begun identifying skills that you're going to need to accomplish your VISTA assignment. So now you're going to learn ways on how to do that, and we're going to give you a lot of resources, as I said. Um, so, Patrick, we are now going to move on. We just introduced ourselves. They know who we are. Um, and we're going to talk now a little bit about the agenda for today. Uh, so here's our agenda. We're going to start by looking at your individual development plan. Um, and this is used as a tool for ongoing learning. We're going to explain that here in just a little bit. Um, some of you may be familiar with it, others may not. Uh, then we'll explore four areas relevant to VISTA service. We're going to show you a range of useful resources on the VISTA campus and on lots of other sites. And then we'll see what, you, what questions that you have. Throughout this presentation, we'll have opportunities for you to participate. And if that works for everyone, I'm going to ask Patrick to kick us off. Patrick. Um, go ahead and start that page right there. Okay. Well, thank you, Jessica. This, this webinar is focused on the professional development of VISTA members. So all of you recently completed your VISTA orientation, which introduced you to the VISTA program, its benefits, and um, touched on concepts of poverty and the theories of change. You've also been engaged in learning the specifics of your VISTA role and uh, at the site where you're serving uh, through the on-site orientation and training, which um, your, your colleagues uh, and your supervisor are implementing and bringing you through. As these formal trainings wind down, though, you'll need to think about what comes next. Even when you finish the on-site training, your learning as the VISTA is far from over. So let's visit one of the most important tools of VISTA service, uh, which is um, your VISTA assignment description, or your VAD. Um, all of you should have a VAD, um, and your responsibilities as a VISTA are outlined in your VAD. Uh, during your on-site orientation, um, you probably had a chance to review the VAD with your supervisor um, and thinking about what it'll take to accomplish your VAD. So um, 
you and your supervisor during conversations throughout your year will more than likely come up with additional activities to support your achievement of your objectives. Um, and really to capitalize on the unique strengths that you bring to your VAD and to the project and to the community. Um, so your VAD may be refined somewhat in the coming weeks, um, but let's take a look and see what kind of things are going on in the VAD. Perfect, Jessica. So, so look, we need to hear from you again, and this time we'll use the chat feature. If you don't see the chat panel on the right side of the screen, open it up now by clicking on the chat icon in the upper right-hand corner. Use the chat panel to share what skills you will need to accomplish your VAD. Now, hopefully you're familiar with what's in your, your VISTA assignment description or, or VAD, right? Whether, you, whether it includes fundraising, uh, volunteer recruitment, or community engagement, it's likely there are things that you haven't done before. So you'll need to learn how to do them. And to learn them, you'll need a plan. So let's, I'm guessing that there's going to be a wide range of skills you'll be using in your coming year. So let's take a look. Yeah, so as okay. Patrick said, right in the chat, that. what skills do you need to accomplish your VAD? Uh -huh. um, we know it's, it, it can kind of sound like a daunting question. So like, let's throw out an example here. If you are going to be grant writing, maybe you need to learn about grant writing. <laughs> it's kind of simple there. Um, but it looks like Mark has our first one. He says volunteer recruitment, outreach, and potentially grant writing. Oh, great, Mark. You need everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Excellent. Excellent. Grant writing, yeah, which is huge for us. I think probably grant writing and the volunteer mobilization stuff, mm -hmm. and then everything that's associated with that, the recruitment, the outreach, the blah, blah, blah. blah. Right. Here it comes. Here it comes. Uh, wow, Sean, no wonder it took you such a long time to answer that question. <laughs> that was three sentences long, public speaking. Bless you, Emily, excuse me. Donor retention, right? Training event planning. Crystal, we're your people. Yep. All right, all right. Shall we move on? Yeah, let's move on. I mean, I think this okay. is a great, I, is kind of get the mind turning here. People are, are clearly getting the idea. Exactly. All right, so where are we? Uh, the VISA assignment description? Yeah. yeah. So, so look. The VAD forms the foundation of the work plan, so hopefully you've met with your, your supervisor and you have explored this, but I suggest that we need to dig a little deeper with the VAD. So when you meet next with your supervisor, be sure to review your VAD and develop measurable milestones and deliverables. Now, Jessica, I've been thinking about this term milestone. We toss it around a lot. Yeah. Um, is it fair to call it short-term goals? Yeah. I think that's a good way to look at it. Okay. Okay. Folks, if, if you're not comfortable with the word milestone, let me know, and, and we'll work on it. But, but basically, you've got long-term goals and short-term goals, and, and those are essentially the milestones. So. So I suggest that you take notes and write down any areas that need clarification in your VAD so that you fully understand your assignment, right? And then keep the VAD handy so you can refer to it for the rest of the year. That part, easy enough, clear enough. But as you get further into service, you and your VISTA supervisor may come up with additional activities that play to your strengths, uh, that, that capitalize on your, your unique qualities. So your VAD is going to evolve right from its original version, not veer off into a whole new world, but evolve. So your supervisor is the person to answer any questions about the VAD, its time frame, those milestones, and any other aspects of your assignment. All right. So 
through your service, you're going to have the opportunity to develop or sharpen your knowledge and skills that help you carry out the VAD, right? One way to help you plan for what skills or knowledge you'll need to develop by creating, is by creating an individual development plan, also known as an IDP, all right? Let's, let's be really clear about what IDPs are. Uh, here we have a relatively simple form to help you think it through. But let's be honest, I'm the kind of person that actually does planning on the back of a napkin. Doesn't make it any worse than not being in a proper IDP form. The, the real meat behind your plan is that you consider what's the goal, long-term and short-term, and what do I need to learn, either learn more or learn from ground zero in order to succeed in that task. Uh, and many of you already identified grants writing, uh, events planning. Some of you may know absolutely nothing, while others have an introduction uh, but need to know um, uh, uh, broader or deeper around that subject. All right, so in this example on screen, if the VAD says, uh, that grant writing is something that I need to be doing, I may need to first think about mm, how much do I already know if I know a little bit about it but would like to develop my skills more than I may list that as mm, a moderate or a medium priority. Uh, if, it, if it's something that I don't need to know immediately, I'll put it as a low priority. But something that's immediately needed and that I know very little about, that's the one that I'm going to prioritize the highest. And that's the one that I'm going to look for the information, the training uh, immediately. Okay, so think of the IDP as a, as a bridge between your VAD and actually accomplishing your goals. Um, you may know where you want to end up, but the IDP allows you to plot your path with concrete action steps for getting there. So as we go through this session today, start thinking about what you need and write down any resources uh, we discussed that may help you gain those skills. Thank you, Patrick. Right? Yeah. All right. No, it's a perfect segue to this next piece, which is um, we're going to walk through four main areas of learning that seem most useful to VISTA members. Um, and for each of those, we're going to show you resources that you can find on the VISTA campus um, and outside of the VISTA campus uh, to guide your learning in this area. We're also going to take a look at how you can connect with other VISTA members um, to gain these skills as well. Okay. So I'm not a lawyer, uh, but I do have lawyers that breathe down my neck. So we're going to show you a number of websites and resources that we think are helpful. But just uh, because we mention them doesn't mean that we're endorsing them by the VISTA program or the Corporation for National and Community Service. All right? So you want to figure out which resources are right for you. Uh, nonetheless, the ones that we're, we're pulling up we think are worthwhile. So to help you follow along with this presentation and avoid having to write down all of the resources we mentioned, there's a handout that you can download that lists the resources uh, we'll be mentioning. And so um, if you look in the chat, uh, you'll see a, a, a list of resources there uh, that are mentioned in this session. Yep, and Scott right. just posted those in there, so thank okay. you, Scott. So you've been at your VISTA service for just a few weeks, um, but you need to know the ins and outs of VISTA service um, in order to serve to your best potential. You learned a lot of it before you started service, but there's plenty more to know. 
So we want to use a cool feature we have here in WebEx, which is the raise hand feature. Yeah, it is a cool feature. It is. Uh, it's located. I wish you could wave, though. You know? Um, it's located. It can if you click on it several times. <laughs> uh, it's located at the bottom um, of the participant panel in the upper right corner of the screen. So if you know the answer to this question, I want you to click raise hand. So the question is, how do you reapply for another year of this disservice? Um, put your hand up if you know the answer. How do you, you know, sign up for another year of this disservice? Is there only one way? You have to know that. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, let's take a look here. Let's see. Anna looks like she has her hand raised. Getting some hands raised in here. All right. All right. Um, looks like quite a, bit, quite a few of you know the answer, but for those of you who don't, you're going to want to look at the VISTA member handbook. How can you tell? Just because they're raising their hand means that they're right? No, they, they said that they know the answer. Oh, okay. Know where oh, okay. So I'm trusting that they know gotcha. where gotcha. to go. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm doubting. I'm doubting you. Um, you guys can all put your hands down now. Put your hands down. Um, <laughs> but you definitely want to first look at the VISTA member handbook. Uh, so Patrick. What can they do in the VISTA member handbook? Well, well, one of the first steps as you get settled in, is read the VISTA handbook. Why? Because we spent years writing it. That's, that's one good reason. But honestly, it details the policies of the VISTA program and outlines the process for requesting assistance. Has all the answers to questions like how many personal days you get, what to do if you want to take college classes, and where to get support if you have a family emergency, for example. Uh, the handbook is located on the VISTA campus in the section called Life is VISTA. Great. Right? Great. So the next thing you're also going to want to do is, and you're probably already in the middle of this, is getting to know your organization. So dive into some of their documents that lay the foundation for your organization, including their strategic plan, their mission, their vision. Um, if there have been visited at your site before, review their accomplishments through past quarterly reports, which your supervisor can probably share with you. You should meet people in various departments so that you can learn their roles and how your VISTA role plays uh, a part in what their work they're doing. Um, these contacts also like they have connections into the community, um, especially for those of you who may not be local to the community. Um, you definitely want to check in with those people to, you know, see who you should connect with so that you can accomplish your assignment. So, another question that we have here. Um, I'm very interested in this question. You're ready to no, be very interested. Patrick, yeah. Patrick loves this question, so we want to know. Um, we'd like to hear from you. So, on the right-hand side, there is a poll, um, and it's, we want you to answer, how often do you meet with your supervisor? Um, so the poll should be coming up here in just a minute. There it is. There it is. is, there it is. Um, so on the right-hand side, let us know. Um, we're talking about formal meetings, meaning that both of you have actually scheduled time to discuss specific topics. We're not talking about just answering a question in passing or having an impromptu five-minute check-in because you walk past, the, past their office door. Um, so take a moment. Do you meet multiple times a week, once a week? Once every two weeks. Gotcha. So these are yeah. scheduled. We're going to exactly. sit, talk. It's on your calendar. Maybe have an agenda. Exactly. All right. Um, and yeah, so like type it in there. Um, yeah, maybe you haven't even set up a formal meeting with your supervisor yet. Maybe it's just once a month. We want to know. Um, so take a, a quick minute there on the poll. We're going to shut that down here soon. Um, about 10 seconds you have left. So let us know. What do you think the majority is going to be, Patrick? What do you think most people are going to say? I, I honestly don't know. How many people we have on? About 50 people? About 50 people. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, really, we don't have the option up here that says, mm, we haven't actually set a schedule. True. Right? So, if that's your case, you know, you can go to the chat and say, actually, you know, none of these options work <laughs> for me. Okay, um, here's what we got, though. Once a week, fabulous. I knew it. Fabulous. Didn't answer. Come on, guys, answer. <laughs> so 37% of those, oh, no, no. 
because what, 25% did not answer. That's now, included. of you 25%, don't be embarrassed to go into the chat and say, it's because we haven't scheduled them yet. I just kind of walk in the room and talk. Yeah, and that's like fine. I mean, we want to make sure that you have something set up. Um, but we That's know, our point, right? Exactly, and we know the schedules are busy. We know that you are just learning about your organization. Maybe there's multiple vistas at your site, so your, your, pro, your supervisor is like having three people that they're orienting and not just you. Um, it can be a challenge to sit down and have an actual meeting. However, one of the biggest elements of VISTA member success, not only personally but professionally, is good supervision and a good member-supervisor relationship. Uh, we want you to have adequate support, um, and that the main support for your service is really your supervisor. They're with you daily, um, and we want to make sure that, that relationship is mutually beneficial. You're getting what you need. They're getting what they need. Um, and so setting up those times to meet uh, weekly or whatnot is, is a great way to do that. You know, Jessica, it may seem counterintuitive to people, uh, but when we develop the training cycle mm -hmm. and saying, okay, there's pre-service training, there's in-service training, there's end-of-service training, there's formal training and informal training, we included supervision as part of that cycle. Correct because of the coaching and mentoring that occurs between uh, the member and the supervisor. Mm -hmm. So we rely on the development of that relationship heavily. Exactly, and I, when I was at this, I had a great supervisor. She was wonderful. Um, I don't think I would have had such a great year without her being the supervisor she was. So it really, you know, builds that relationship. Gotcha. And everybody knows what to do if they're having trouble with their supervisor, right? I think so, but let's remind them, Patrick. Um, state off, first see if you can work it out with your sure. supervisor. But then if, if you don't know who your supervisor is, you can't find the supervisor, it's a state office. Yes. Yeah. All right. Definitely. And you just got it, you got us right here on this next screen here, Patrick, um, which is to talk about, you know, if, what about what to do if your supervisor yeah. isn't providing what exactly. you need? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Great. So um, we also have another webinar I do want to touch on um, that digs deep into the supervisor issues and how to manage them. It's called Managing Up, Navigating the Supervisor, um, the VISTA Supervisor Relationship. It is on demand, um, so it can be available for you to watch at any time. And we highly recommend that you watch that webinar. Um, you know, it's really, it's a good way to navigate that relationship. Agreed. So, now that you've read the handbook, you got to know your organization, you're going to have regular meetings with your supervisor. Um, we want to add a couple of more little light hacks here for you, which was meeting with your supervisor and also getting additional support when you need it. Um, so, keep those in mind. These are our light hacks for VISTAs. Um, just a few other things to keep looking at as you go through your VISTA service. Um, but Patrick, we're going to ask another chat here question. I really, I really like this question. Okay. I think I know the one that you want. Yes. So, you've been at your project for a couple of weeks, and maybe something has popped up that makes you nervous about your VAT. Uh, maybe you're worried about being asked to do something that's beyond your current skill set. Well, maybe the tasks outlined seem too big. Uh, so is there anything that we could provide that would alleviate this nervousness? On the flip side, though, we'd also like to know what you're excited about in your VAD, right? Is there anything specific that you're working on or gearing up to to work on that you're particularly passionate about? So we love about you know, listening about the wonderful work that you're doing, so, so let us know. So let me see, we'll give a, a few minutes to share your ideas, and we're asking for the, uh, the ideas to go into the chat, right? Yeah. We're not asking it to go anywhere else, okay. Yeah, so first question, what are you nervous about? Uh, and then second is, what are you most excited about? Right, I'm never nervous. <laughs> I'm always nervous, so like, right. let's put that out there. Right, so you don't have to answer both. You can go wherever your heart leads. Yeah. See, Sean, I'm with you. I'm with you. Nervous, 
writing successful grants. Now, if I had to write a successful grant, I might be nervous. True. Like, you're like, that's a lot of pressure. Right. I can deal with grants and let them go they wherever <laughs> they have to go. But if they got to be successful, I'd be nervous. True. Grants is a big deal. We're going to be talking about that later on. We'll talk about some strategy we have to get. Huge. It's yeah. a huge issue, and uh, look forward to it. Here's somebody who says, I'm excited to organize a STEM challenge event for higher education. Very cool. Excited about creating a business plan, really, that expands the financial education services provided, hopefully, one that involves youth. Very cool. Yeah, there's more excitement. I'm so happy to hear there's more excitement. Website design. Now, that might make me nervous, but really fun. Social media development, media communications. Wow, you got a lot. Teaching others about how to sustain what's developed. Right on, Susan. And so I'm supposed to do client feedback from a survey. Um, I've developed and I've tried um, several options that have gotten little to no response. I'm nervous that I won't get my results. My host site wants. Who said that? Oh, this is uh, collecting the client feedback yeah. survey. You know what? Don't be nervous about the results. I used to worry about that a lot. It'll work out. Besides, if they don't respond immediately, you go out and you ask again. Losing foundation, losing foundations due to grants that I write right on. I, don't worry, Andre. Fundraising, right? Yeah, fundraising is hard for me too. Is that what you did? I had to do some of that was was part of fundraising, and it was. It, I don't think it's it comes naturally to me that what fundraising you kind of need to go out. So it was a it was a difficult thing. Um, but if you can if you can have your own angle on it and doing it in a way that makes you kind of comfortable or kind of putting in some of your strengths in there, it, it's really helpful. Gotcha. Um, but these are great. I mean, I'm love to. I'm happy that we didn't get all a ton of nervous or like a. Not that I don't want a ton of excitement, but you know, yeah. it was a good balance. Good balance, and and actually, uh, you know, folks, we talk about appreciative inquiry, and and we need to walk the walk. Asking people what they're worried about is not as it's not as positive as saying what are you excited about and what are you going to do about it. True. All right, go ahead. Um, who's up? You're That's up. me. That's go me. On. So now we're on to, we, we've talked about life hacks um, to make your service easier. So now let's move on to look at three other areas that relate to your VISTA assignments. So we're going to first start with community outreach. This can encompass a lot, um, including not only general communication, but social media. So as you said, you're going to do social media, as well as that dreaded direct face-to-face -face outreach, Patrick. It's hard talking to people to their face nowadays. Um, and I'm not even saying that sarcastically, it's difficult. Um, we'll show you some campus resources and some resources beyond the VISTA campus, um, as well as some peer resources from former and current VISTAs. Um, so let's first dive into the campus resources. So there are several VISTA campus resources that dig into capacity building, which is essential to community development work. Um, and there is one that helps you challenge your own assumptions, and it's called Not Always What You Think. Mm -hmm. There's also an interactive tutorial on community building called The Five C's that looks at community, connections, control, cash, and uh, collective action. I was just going to see if you could name all those. Let's see. Happy you could. Oh, thank you. The last resource. Uh, listed here is strengthening your organization, your community, and your projects, uh, which shows you how to build your program sustainability by deepening your ties to the surrounding community. I think somebody was addressing sustainability. Was it Susan? So use, um, by the way, use the faceted um, search feature on the VISTA campus to narrow down the results to get to the resources and tutorials that will best suit your needs. All right. So also on the campus, there are a number of on-demand webinars on topics relating to outreach that you can watch at your, uh, your convenience. 
whenever you, you can. Here are just a few. Writing powerful impact statements. Uh, to engage others in your project, you need to tell a compelling story of what your project's doing. About planning a social media campaign for your project. This webinar guides you in developing a social media plan through setting realistic goals, examining components of a social media plan, and implementing it. And then there's uh, building a professional network for service and career. As part of your professional and personal development, you need to develop partnerships, interact with many people, and engage the community. You can use this webinar to leverage networks for professional success and social impact during and after your service. Now, typically, we offer webinars every month, so there's plenty of opportunity to learn. To access either the live or on-demand uh, webinars on the VISTA campus, go to Connect and Learn uh, and connect on, or excuse me, click on uh, webinars. Uh, we'll send you an email notice so you know what's coming up, uh, that is for the live webinars. Be sure to register for the webinar in advance and add it to your calendar so you won't end up with scheduling conflicts and you won't forget. So in addition to those resources, um, we're a huge proponent of peer resources. We think that um, you all bring a lot to the table and we've you know, mined your, your wealth of knowledge in the past. So there are a lot of ways that you can get great insight and resources from one another. So. Um, First is the discussion forums. Uh, for example, there is a thread called Getting Information uh, to Program Clients. It's in the forum, I think it's you and the work. Um, this one looks at ways of reaching out to clients and potential, potential clients of a program. So for that person who said maybe I'm, I'm having trouble getting the, um, the feedback from the survey, maybe see if there's any you know, things in there that can help you that someone else has kind of worked through before. Um, also, the best way to stay connected to the forums is to subscribe to each forum that interests you. That way you get automatic emails mm -hmm. uh, subscribed when someone replies to a post. Um, and we're going to show you that a little bit later. Right. There's also another section of the campus that contains materials created by VISTA leaders as part of the Action Learning Challenge. Um, it's in the team product page. In the area of community outreach is the, uh, uh, sorry, it's a guide that says uh, gain community buy-in for your VISTA project. Um, and it highlights nine best practices for successful community participation. So it's made by VISTA leaders for VISTA, so it's a great resource. You know, you bring up VISTA leaders. I often, folks, if, if you have a VISTA leader, would you just let me know in the chat? I'd be interested. Uh, before we're talking about support that you can get from both your supervisor and your state office, if you have a VISTA leader, fantastic resource. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you need to know more about VISTA leaders, uh, you can find it on the campus or just ask us yeah. one way or another. We'll get the information to you. Definitely. All right, but let's look beyond the VISTA campus for a minute because there's a fantastic resource developed by the University of Kansas. Uh, it's called the Community Toolbox. It's free, online, uh, for anyone working to build healthy communities and bring about social change, which is at the heart of our, our work. It offers thousands of pages of tips and tools for taking action in communities, whether it's community assessment, planning, evaluation, advocacy, uh, this community toolbox has something to offer among its 300 educational modules and other free tools. It's currently available, I think, in English, Spanish, and Arabic. So it, in, it includes extensive readings on community building, toolkits, a troubleshooting guide, and the database of best practices. They even offer Ask an Advisor, which I, I'm so impressed with. You can submit a question through the Ask an Advisor to their panel of experts 
uh, as well as browse answers to other people's questions to those experts. I love doing that. That kind of thing I really enjoy because then I'm like, well, I reinvent the wheel or I love being able to ask someone who really knows what's going on. Frankly, I just don't see how they do it. I mean, the resource to, to do it is amazing. Oh, yeah. So there are a few other resources um, outside of VISTA that may interest you. Uh, there's a great thing that you can do to connect with others working in the community. Um, and you can look for, uh, that, that would be through a young nonprofit professional network. Um, they can be a great place to network. Um, they also offer kind of learning opportunities, social events, um, and other maybe discounts on courses and those sorts of things as a group. So check that out. There's also uh, the Building Movement Project um, that puts together a handbook on community engagement. They call it a NICE Guide, Nonprofits Integrating Community Engagement. <laughs> and it is really nice, Patrick. Look at that, all that punny stuff. Um, there are also online courses. There's Allison and Coursera. Uh, Allison has free courses on encouraging diverse community involvement. And Coursera offers, um, there's some courses on integrated marketing uh, communications that really take a look at how to communicate effectively with various audiences um, that could help with your outreach efforts. This is especially important. I mean, this is important for everyone to know how to communicate to different audiences, but or if you relocated to serve, maybe you're serving in a completely different community than the one you're from, and you have no idea how, what their culture of, of communication is there. This is a great way to kind of, once you learn about that, to then tailor your communication to them afterwards. Um, and your supervisor, we don't want to leave them out. Your supervisor may also have additional resources um, and trainings that you could take that's related to your VAD. So talk to them. Say, hey, anything that you would recommend that I take that can help me with things I'm looking at doing? Absolutely. Yes, that goes for, as we say, they're definitely part of the yeah. training cycle. Yes. Yeah. So, Jessica, let, let's move from community outreach to volunteer mobilization, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And see what kinds of resources might advance uh, service in this area. So, whether it's a big part of your VAD or an occasional need for special events, uh, chances are pretty strong that you will have a need to engage volunteers in what you're doing. So fortunately, there's a lot available on the subject. Um, the VISTA campus has an entire section on volunteer management with a range of resources. Uh, this uh, offers a 10-week online course in volunteer mobilization. Uh, that you can also earn college credit, um, underwritten by the American Council on Education. And there are related resources in other areas of the campus, so a quick search will turn up a lot more. For example, there's a resource on engaging volunteers in fundraising events. And as you might have guessed, uh, there are a number of on-demand webinars uh, related to volunteer mobilization that you can watch at your convenience. Uh, we want to list just a few that are, you can see on your screen here. Um, first is High Impact Volunteer Recruitment. It teaches you how to best recruit the best volunteers for your project. Um, you know, best quality over quantity in the sense of maybe certain tasks and certain types of volunteers. There's also building sustainability into a volunteer program. So it shows you how to anticipate volunteer expectations and then build relationships that enhance that engagement. Um, because you don't want to just recruit a volunteer, you want to keep them around. Um, and then there's also creating group volunteer opportunities that engage and inspire. So um, looking at how to plan and implement a large group project um, that engages community volunteers and attracts them to your project. So maybe it's this widespread, something that gets the whole community involved, know more about your project and kind of talk more about that. Uh, they live on the VISTA campus in the webinars page. They're on demand. You can watch them whenever you want. Great. Now, again, in support of peer learning, the campus also has information and advice from other VISTAs. Right? The discussion forums on the campus have lots of posts about, uh, uh, about volunteers. For example, there's a thread called Volunteer Record Keeping that discusses the pros and cons of various databases and software packages that manage volunteer data. Another thread looks at ways of getting volunteers to stick around. There's more, so we encourage you to 
use the search feature in the forums to see what your colleagues have shared. And be sure to weigh in and add your own voice. Um, also, the Action Learning Team Projects uh, page has a fantastic guide on National Days of Service project ideas that provides instruction, planning timelines, and templates for planning and implementing successful community volunteer projects for National Days of Service. Patrick, do you know when our next National Day of Service is? You know what? I don't. It's 9-11 Day of Service. 9-11? 9-11. But we do have AmeriCorps Week coming up, and a lot of partners there. do that. So we have AmeriCorps Week that's coming up in March. Um, if you haven't already heard about AmeriCorps Week, it is coming up. Um, we do have a, a tagline, it's AmeriCorps Members Get Things Done. Um, so definitely check that out on nationalservice.gov. We're very excited about AmeriCorps Week uh, coming up here. So, Sorry, I didn't know that. Yeah. You did. It's okay. We played this. We did this on purpose. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. So um, looking outside of VISTA, uh, there are many places to find information on volunteer management. You can first look for local volunteer manager groups in your area. There are local associations. Um, they're sometimes called DOVIAs, D-O-V-I-A-S, which stands for Directors of Volunteers in Agencies, that offer regular meetings, trainings, and networking opportunities. Um, there's also organizations at the national level, um, and one is called ALIVE, which is Association of Leaders in Volunteer Engagement. If there's not a group in your area, or maybe you just simply prefer online interaction, there is a wealth of online communities and discussion sites for volunteer managers. Yep, and of course you'll find a wealth of learning resources on the Internet as well. Energize Inc. has the most comprehensive collection of resources on volunteer management. There are professional development resources, tools related to career advancement, uh, links to online communities, and a directory of local volunteer manager groups. Volunteer Match offers more than just a powerful volunteer recruitment site. They offer free webinars on a range of volunteer management topics, books, and resources, and a volunteer management blog. And of course, the Points of Light offers an annual conference on volunteering and service, uh, recognition programs like the Daily Point of Light Award and the President's Volunteer Service Award. Um, Oh, and the volunteer recruitment site, All for Good. And then finally, the Council for Certification in Volunteer Administration offers a professional credential for those in the field of volunteer administration, along with a, a textbook and pathway for achieving it. So they publish the professional ethics and volunteer management that can serve as a guide for all of you working with volunteers. And Patrick, I also did want to touch on the last one we have here, which is Everyone Ready. Right. Um, it is an online management skill building program, um, and it does offer some of the best known names in volunteer management from around the world. So it's not just local, but from around the world. Yeah. It's not free, but many larger organizations have subscriptions. So you might find a partner with access to this resource. Um, definitely check in with your supervisor. Good deal. So this brings us to our fourth area that we want to explore with you, which is resource development. So this is our capacity builders. And of course, one of the most common ways they build capacity is to generate financial resources for the organization or the community. Uh, you know, capacity building, you want to make, you want to expand the organization's outreach, their efficiency, um, and that they can serve more clients. So definitely take um, you know, a hard look at capacity building. All of you should have that written into your VAT. Um, so beyond your VISTA service, knowing how to raise money is a great skill to have, um, even if you plan to work in the nonprofit sector or the private sector. So what are some resources for resource development? Um, the VISTA campus has an entire section on resource development with resources related to grant writing, fundraising, and special events. There is a tutorial on researching grants, and it really is a great introduction to finding funding opportunities. 
Because if you're like me, I'd have zero idea of where to search. I'd be like, where do I find grants in Google? Like, <laughs> so it's a great resource. I, I also think it's overwhelming. It is. It's really overwhelming. You'll get hundreds of pages of it. Yeah, and I won't know where to start. What's you don't know where to start. Yeah. Um, we also offer a 10-week course on resource development, which you can earn three college credit recommendations. Yes, so for those of you who need to write successful grants, I have to say, I love this course. Uh, volunteer mobilization, love it. This one, resource development, it's really excellent for any of you who are involved in grant writing and resource development. It's fantastic. Yeah, some of our colleagues here have taken the course and only have good things to say about it. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So, of course, we have live and on-demand webinars related to resource development as well. So there's creating an online fundraising strategy, uh, writing winning proposals, advice from an experienced grant reviewer, and a webinar on how to find uh, funding opportunities. So please, just remember to register in advance and add the webinar to your calendar. Yep. Yeah. Okay, where are we? Now we're uh, peer, resources. peer resources, right. So again, this has never failed to share, and they've got loads of information and advice on fundraising and grant writing, right? So there's a thread called Fundraising Ideas, where this is a sharing just that, ideas for a fundraising event. Others uh, look at donor tracking software, including Salesforce and a compilation of grant-related resources. And these are just a few examples. So please use the forum search feature and see what else we've got. For those of you that see yourself in resource development field, you should check out the Association for Fundraising Professionals uh, and explore their professional development section. It includes everything from conferences and leadership training to executive institutes and certification. Uh, the American Grant Writers Association uh, publishes a professional standards and code of ethics for grant writers. They also offer a free newsletter and a fee-based online courses and workshops, so check those out as well. There are also many local networks um, for grant writers, so see if there's one in your area, and it could be another great way to meet others in your field. Right. So also, while we're talking about other resources, um, the Foundation Center and Grantsmanship, Grantsmanship Center offer a trove of information about private foundations, corporate giving programs, government grants, and other funding sources. They have online learning resources, trainings, and a whole database of funders. Uh, some of the resources are paid by subscription, but there are plenty available for free. Um, there's also GrantSpace. GrantSpace is a service of the Foundation Center that offers free and paid training and online learning resources. You know, just got, got to be honest, I didn't know grantsmanship was a word. I didn't either. It's hard to say. Grantsmanship. grantsmanship. Yeah. It's difficult. The tongue with the teeth. <laughs> yeah. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. Oh, got that's it. what it is. Okay. <laughs> um, so can we do... Uh, Get, get, yeah, so, okay. I'm excited for this question. Okay, good. So now it's our turn to ask you, what are the resources you've used for professional development, right? Um, please use the chat panel to post your suggestions. Have you found a free course or an online resource that was especially helpful? Is there an affinity group, maybe a professional organization you think resonates especially well with VISTA service. Um, maybe there was a TED Talk uh, that you heard that you think everyone should uh, see, right? All right. Have you people to TED Talks, right? I am sort of addicted. Okay. <laughs> so it's an understatement to say you can't I'm a li So I'm an NPR junkie. Okay. And so NPR then leads me to podcasts, which leads me inevitably to TED Talks. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Love. And you know what? Alf here said, yep, TED Talks are totally awesome. Totally awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Who said that? Alf. Alf. Thank you, Alf. So we're getting a lot in here. We have Toastmasters. 
Right. Meetup. Meetup's a great one, too. Meetup, they have, like, a meetup for everything. Like, corgi walkers that put unicorn heads on their dogs while drinking lattes is, like, a meetup group or something. Like, very specific, wide range. You just made that up. I did make that up, but wouldn't that be sweet if that was real? So the Khan Academy uh, technical writing course is good, huh? Who, who sent up that was Mark? Mark. Mm -hmm. I, I have to confess, I have not explored Khan Academy yet, and I think I need to. It's also local United Way. United Way is on here. United Way is a great resource. Yep. It's Grant Watch. What a grant thing. Grantsmanship. Grant Watch. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, keep them coming. Um, we're going to definitely mark these down and keep those coming in the chat. Yeah, if you think of any, just write them in, please, because you know, the chat will also go on record and people can use it. Exactly. So now we're going to talk about just a few more uh, resources here. There's so many. Um, and the first one that we're going to talk about is Patrick's favorite. So even though we're online right now, even though we've given you a lot of links, a lot of resources online, we definitely want you to remember your brick and mortar public library. It's my favorite because I got in trouble for this, didn't I? Exactly, when you called it a lowly library, but you meant it was infection. I did. People, I'm telling you, I was joking. I said, and let's not forget your, your lowly library, and people exploded. <laughs> but they are a valuable learning site, not just for the materials they have there, but also the, the networking opportunities and the courses. Um, we also have access to online databases and grant writing resources. Librarians are also usually well versed in the latest digital technologies, so take a look um, and check in with your librarian. We also have a lot of audiobooks, ebooks, movies, music, and more. I read so many ebooks, it's not even funny, it's great. Um, you do, don't you? I do, I love it. I hate ebooks. All right. Um, not to mention, they um, <laughs> offer bulletin boards. So if you're looking for volunteers, it's another great place for volunteer recruitment, all of those sorts of things. Um, what about the U.S. Census Bureau? That just sounds live. Like, yeah, let's see if I can get people really upset. And then <laughs> there's the lowly U.S. Census Bureau. <laughs> yes, the Census Bureau. It offers free webinars on a range of topics related to uh, using census data to better understand communities. So, joking aside, it's incredible. Whether it's it's looking at education and income levels in various neighborhoods or, or understanding who's living in your county or state, uh, those webinars offer insight and allow you to conduct your own research based on your interests. And at the local level, you can get valuable information on community needs, available services, and other details about social service, um, the social service landscape, I should say, from organizations like the United Way. It sounds like some of you have used that before. Um, volunteer centers and Chamber of Commerce. Some of the organizations also offer training and networking. So find out what's available in your community. You can also, you know, turn to the internet for free courses. Um, Many of you probably know this. Uh, you're probably familiar with sites like Coursera. I, I know someone has Khan Academy up there. Mm -hmm. Allison and Linda, we've already uh, we uh, about. talked about. Um, what's the Harvard one? I've been taking a course in one. I think it's called um, Harvard X. Uh. Um, they pr provide free online courses and more specific to the nonprofit world are sites like Nonprofit Ready, with dozens of free online courses in everything from project management to nonprofit accounting. The Alliance for Nonprofit Management and Free Management Library offer free as well as inexpensive articles, reports, handbooks, and resources on a range of topics related to nonprofit work. So you get the idea. <laughs> right. uh, I think we've given you a lot of resources, so many resources. I'm um, sure your head hurts a little bit, but as we said, we're going to have all these documented for you, and you'll have access to this recording and a list of resources after. That's what's really key. Exactly. Um, there are a lot of resources out there, no matter what topics you're interested in. We do want to bring your attention back to the VISTA program and the VISTA campus, because they are really very tailored to what you do. Um, 
As we mentioned, your fellow DISTA members, your leaders, your supervisors are great sources of information on what works in the VISTA contact, or the VISTA context, I should say. Um, so don't be afraid to reach out to them. Um, people want to help other people, so check out with those people. <laughs> and in fact, look, you can connect with other VISTAs uh, through the campus, right? So fill out your project area and interest in your campus user profile. And add a photo. I got to be honest. I never add photos now. Avatars. <laughs> that I'll do. I'm a little. I'm a little shy with my photo though. So interact on the campus forums or, or use the map to find vistas and alumni in your area. Uh, Vista alumni are, are often very happy to help current vistas get started. Um, and then our outreach and recruitment unit um, would call me remiss if I didn't say connect with the VISTA program and other VISTAs through our social media. There's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Share your photos of service, which are pretty cool, and tag at AmeriCorps VISTA. And whether you've been using LinkedIn or not, now is the time to create and update your profile. Uh, within LinkedIn, you can search for AmeriCorps Vista or um, and go to our company page, click on follow. This will ensure that our curated job search advice updates show up in your feed. You can create um, or update your LinkedIn profile um, with your Vista service under experience. Select AmeriCorps Vista as the company. The Vista logo will automatically populate. Um, you want, you can also create a second listing of your sponsoring organization as a company. Um, and make sure to include the words AmeriCorps Vista in your job title. As we mentioned before, there we have an employers of national service. We have a lot of people who recognize the name AmeriCorps Vista. So, you know, use that. People recognize that name. So you definitely want to make sure it's in there. I, I probably shouldn't be saying this, but look, I am right now doing a search through Vista. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of non-competitive eligibility using LinkedIn. Exactly. Uh, so it's to your advantage. Uh, and I, I know other federal agencies will do the same. All right. So um, that goes then to say make sure that you identify yourself as a VISTA by putting the VISTA logo in your email uh, and on your business card. Um, you can see a couple of examples here up on screen. M make sure your organization's website, its social media platforms, its brochures, and other communications also mention that VISTA is powering your program. And uh, Jessica, I'm, I'm saying it now for the record, yes. wear your VISTA polo shirt. With pride. Yes, you gotta rock that polo. So you know I haven't rocked the Vista gear. Right. I said rock you Vista gear, I meant rock your Vista gear. There you go. And, <laughs> and look, uh, the handout uh, for this session contains links where you can get Vista logos, um, business card templates, uh, a free poster to use to decorate the office and represent Vista in the field. So if you want to order more Vista gear, the National Service Gear store is listed there, too. Exactly. Um, and you also might want to start thinking about creating what we call a minute message, which is a short speech about your organization and your role as a VISTA. Um, sometimes it's also called like an elevator speech. So how would you explain what you're going to do as a VISTA or what you do as a VISTA member to someone who wants to learn about your organization? And maybe you only have a short amount of time. So rehearse it. Let us know what you do. Um, and there are plenty of resources on the VISTA campus that can teach you about creating these messages. I also think on YouTube you can also see them too. Well, look, I mean, I gotta say, they're on YouTube. They're also part of the, the virtual member orientation. Right, they're part of the insert. The, so yeah. if you look at, for those in-service courses, you'll see pretty good guidance, I think, on how to develop that, that minute intro. True, very true. And it is worth your while to do it. So we've mentioned a number of resources and features on the VISTA campus that will help you stay connected and informed. Um, now we're going to hear an, from an expert in the VISTA campus, Scott Weinrobe, um, who is going to show you how to access some of the features we mentioned during this presentation. Um, Scott, are you there with us? 
I am still here. Hi, Jessica, and hi, everyone. Uh, it's really nice to be with you today and uh, have a chance to talk with you a little bit more about the VISTA campus. Jessica and Patrick have already shared quite a bit, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a brief uh, behind-the-scenes tour. So um, one thing I should note is I, as I show the campus, I'm logged in with uh, my VISTA member account. And you'll really want to be sure when you go to the campus, not you can, you can browse a lot of the resources without log, being logged in, but logging in unlocks a lot of the really powerful features, and I'm going to talk about a few of them here. Um, so the campus was designed uh, to be really easy to navigate, at least as we, we hope uh, you'll find it easy to navigate. Um, you just uh, roll your mouse, hover your mouse uh, over the different menus to see the drop downs, at least if you're on a desktop computer, or uh, uh, press them if, if you're on a phone. The campus is also very uh, mobile friendly, will work on phones or tablets. Um, I think you'll especially want to check out a few sections uh, that are really going to be most relevant to you during your year of service. There's, of course, Life is a Vista, um, the work. Um, Jessica and Patrick have talked about both of those sections, as well as Connect and Learn. And um, let me dive into a little bit uh, some of the interactive features that um, may help to kind of enhance your use of the campus. So first, let's talk about the learning plan. You can find that in a few different ways, but probably the easiest if you're logged in is to just um, go to the little um, drop-down menu uh, beneath your name in the upper right part of the screen and click on uh, learning plan. And there you'll see three categories. Uh, there's required learning, which is really just the required pre-service courses that you took um, before you uh, started your VMO um, or, or your pre-service orientation. Um, they're suggested learning, and that uh, consists of both uh, learning that is suggested to you automatically when you create an account on the campus, and um, it also ties in with a feature I'll mention in a minute uh, called Learning Connections, where you can connect with fellow VISTAs, leaders, supervisors, or even alumni, and suggest uh, useful training from the campus to each other. And then finally, there's uh, favorite content, and that's kind of a, a feature that we hope uh, you'll find cool and, and helpful. It's really a way to bookmark um, information that you find on the campus so that you can easily find it and return to it the next time um, you, uh, you, you go back to the campus. So, um, for example, here, uh, I've heard from a colleague that there was a really good uh, webinar about um, uh, translating your VISTA service to uh, your resume and career. So, um, in the search box, I type in resume. Even though I didn't type it properly with the accent, it's still going to find it for me. Um, there is really a lot here, so as Patrick mentioned before, um, we have faceted search uh, functionality on the campus, which will really help you zero in on just what you're looking for. So again, I happen to know that it is um, a recorded webinar, and here it is. This is the one that I had heard about, and uh, so I'm going to click on it. And uh, it's a recorded webinar, so it runs a little while. Really good information, but it might not be something you have time to watch all in one sitting. Um, if you don't, you can come down here and, uh, in fact, uh, I like this one so much I already um, added it to my learning plan, So, um, but if I had not, uh, I just removed it, now I can add it again. Um, and then the next time I go back to my learning plan, um, it's right there in um, my favorite content so that I can pick it up and, and continue watching where I left off. Um, I mentioned uh, that you can make learning connections. Let me show you a little bit more about how to do that in case you haven't come across this feature already. So you can find learning connections in a couple of ways, but a fast way is just to roll over the Connect and Learn menu and click on Learning Connections. And that will take you to a page where you can search for people. You can also filter by focus area, but let's say that I want to connect to the campus with my supervisor who happens to be named Celia Supervisor. So I type in her name and I click search. And when I scroll down, there she is. Um, I can click this little plus icon. It's just a one-click feature here. Um, well, 
maybe two clicks. <laughs> I click uh, to add her and then it asks me to confirm. Um, once I click send, then it's going to send a message to Celia saying that I want to make a learning connection. And once she approves that, then we can message each other using messaging features within the campus or we can suggest resources um, from the campus to each other through, um, through the learning plan. So another way that you can connect with folks uh, is through the VISTA map. And you'll also find that under Connect and Learn. Uh, click on VISTA map. You can uh, filter it um, by um, focus area, by service start date, or by VISTA role. Um, it includes VISTAs as well as supervisors, leaders, um, folks from the CMCS state offices, even alumni. So um, again, all I have to do is click a little uh, pin or tab. Uh, click the, the icon to add them, and that's how I would send a connection request to that person. So it's a great way to find connections in your area. And then finally, let me just uh, briefly mention the VISTA forums. And we've talked uh, quite a bit about that um, in the webinar, but um, I know there was one question through the chat about how to locate the forums. That's also in the Connect and Learn section of the campus. Just click on Forums. And there are forums for members, for supervisors, and for leaders. You'll be interested in the VISTA forums, of course. Um, and the most popular one here with some of the kind of heaviest activity and really good conversations is the VISTA Cafe. But I'd encourage you just to explore um, through the different forums. And um, if I go back a page, you'll notice that there's also a special um, search that just allows you to search within the forum. So when you search through the main search field of the campus, it, it excludes the forum posts so that you can more easily find resources. But if you want to dive into um, some of the forum content, we created a special search feature that allows you to search just within the forum post. And you'll find that on the main forums page. So with that, uh, thanks uh, for letting me talk a little bit more about the campus. And I'm going to go ahead and turn things back to um, Patrick and Jessica. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's so helpful uh, to know where various resources are housed and, and learn how the various interactive tools actually work. So, so folks, if you're not sure what you should do next on the campus, here are a few ideas. One, visit the work section to explore the resources there. And uh, as Scott was showing us, add a resource to your learning plan so that you can easily find it later. And then finally, number three, connect with other VISTAs using learning connections or the discussion forums or, you know, my favorite, uh, the VISTA map. That's right. And that's under the Connect and Learn. We got a question here. Um, Scott just posted the link. It's on vistacampus.gov slash map. So we'd love to hear from you again because we love to hear your insight. Um, we've given you so much information today, so we're hoping that maybe you've gleaned a couple of next steps that you can take today to continue your professional development journey. So maybe that's going to be looking for an online course. Maybe that's going to be searching for um, a community association meeting. Maybe that's going to be looking up a young professional, nonprofit professional network yep, uh, <laughs> um, group in your area. So let us know in the chat what is a step that you're going to take to continue your professional development journey. Oh, you're testing them. I'm testing them. I want okay. To People, it's a test. It's a test that you'll pass because I know you listen to me and I know there's so much information, but I have something really caught your eye as you're talking. So let us know. Um, I know there's been a couple questions about the map and about the forum, so I think today we're going to go ahead and look at those. Did we answer them? Yeah, yeah. looks like Scott sent them. Scott did. Crystal, Scott and Eric have been thank you for asking. Yeah, so let us know. What and we got Eric Powell on it as well. Let's see, Victoria's going to create AmeriCorps Vista business card. Very cool. Very cool. Unless she means like, um, uh, like flashcards. <laughs> this is going to test people on the street about AmeriCorps VISTA, which would be also very cool. <laughs> uh, Chris is going to practice her elevator speech. Good. Flesh out that profile. Practice the elevator speech, yes. And the way that you practice it is imagine that you're going to the 12th floor and then the next day only to the 6th floor. <laughs> um, 
So see if you can do it in two floors, the best way to do it. If Andre is going to be attending a workshop next month on telling the narrative of our organization and networking with other NPOs and foundations in really? Chicago. Really? Cool. And Victoria said flashcards would be awesome, Patrick. Awesome. <laughs> right, Victoria. Right. Oh, good. Samantha's okay. going to enroll in an online course through the campus. Oh, good. Look, I'm telling you, those online blended courses are excellent. Samantha, um, they're, they're in high demand, so enroll and, and fight to get in there, please. So now we're going to talk about next steps. Patrick and I are going to talk about a couple of things. Maybe you're stumped. Maybe you don't know what's going to go on. Maybe you don't know where to start. So we're going to give you a couple they of They do not look stumped. They don't look stumped, but, okay. you know, for those that may be, um, we're going to give you some concrete things. So first. We want you to use the webinars on the Vista campus to enhance and identify some professional development goals and share those with your supervisor. If you do not have a regular meeting scheduled with your supervisor, reach out to them and schedule one. Make that happen today. Not necessarily the meeting, but talk to your supervisor and say, hey, I need a meeting on your schedule. Okay. Done. It sounds like you told them to do two things. First, again, the webinar thing, and then you told them to do that. So, look, do the supervisor thing. Me, I'm going to say, identify one resource, non-demand webinar, self-paced course, one of our videos, and add that to your learning plan on the, on the VISTA campus. I, I swear do. it'll work. I swear. Um, you can also research a professional organization in your current field or in a field that interests you. Investigate a typical career path in that area while looking at online trainings, resources, and other learning opportunities. Yep. Uh, look, uh, check the handout for the section that includes the links to example, uh, uh, yeah, to, to all of the sites that we, we pointed out. Um, we've given you a lot to think about. On, on one level, I'm afraid that we've given you too much to think about. And I'm sure that you have questions. But before we start the Q&A, uh, we just need the feedback on this presentation, especially to test if we've just saturated them with so much information. <laughs> uh, yeah. Help me. Take a few moments. Let us know. We really we developed these webinars for you. We want yeah. to know what you liked, what you want more of. Yeah, your feedback, uh, especially for this one, uh, because we must have worked on this now for three years. Too much, too little. We're looking for that gold deluxe webinar. So you should see the evaluation poll on the right side of your screen. So just take a minute to answer those questions, and uh, we will continue to improve. All right. So Go now ahead, it's time for their questions. Um, you can ask them in the Q&A, but I'm also going to ask Sarah, our operator, to come on the phone and say, how we can ask questions verbally. Uh, Sarah, are you there? Yes, I am. If you would like to ask a question from the phone line, please press star one from your phone. Make sure your phone is unmuted and speak your name clearly when prompted. If you would like to withdraw your question, you can press star two. One moment as we wait for any questions from the phone line. Thank you, Sarah. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the questions that have come in via the Q&A. Okay, because people never use the phone. Don't say that, because now it's, they're going to all call in. They're going to prove you wrong. I'm, I'm telling you, it's just old school stuff. Old school stuff. Um, so someone asked, I did see this question earlier, and Patrick, I'm going to kick this one to you. So this person said, keep hearing capacity building, and that it is a big part of my VAD, but nobody explains what steps I need to, to take to do my best at my host site. Really? Give me insight on this. Brilliant question. And who asked that? Uh, it's Tamara or Tamara. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Right. It goes either way. Yeah. So I'm going to say Tamara. Um, good North African pronunciation. Yes. Look, it's really important. It's been something that has worried me for a while now. We're talking about capacity building, and I don't know if we're defining it well or how to get there. So. Capacity building is, is either developing the knowledge, skills, and abilities of your colleagues at the organization or a counterpart in the community. 
That's the human dimension. It's also creating products that the organization needs in order to operate. And by that I'm talking about could be um, session plans, curricula, um, um, a desk reference on how to do a particular job or a particular process. Uh, it could also be a list of organizations that are partners in the community so they know who to turn to in the future. And of course, the major pro product for many of you is a grant. Or thirdly, it can be the development of a system, similar to a product, but it's actually the process. Um, how does one go about identifying volunteers, bringing volunteers together, educating volunteers, and managing volunteers, and celebrating the successes of volunteers, right? There is a process for you. Or it could be the process of setting up an after-school program and how to manage it. That is capacity building, right? So the rule of thumb is if you're doing something completely on your own, and you're not interacting, and you're not developing a system, a product with a partner, either in the community or the organization, then you're probably missing a link. And in, in missing that link, you're not exactly developing the capacity of the organization. You're doing good work. And at the end, you're, you may have a great product, but you won't be able to pass it on either to another VISTA following you or, more importantly, I think, to a member of the organization. I hope, I hope that helped. Patrick, that was great. That was very helpful. So thank you for that. Yeah, thanks, Jessica. And if you need more information, just write in the chat or or star one Sarah, and we'll talk some more. <laughs> well, speaking of Sarah, there is a Sarah who's asking a question. Okay. And um, it, uh, it goes back to when we were talking about baths, and if they're stay, your bad may evolve. Yeah. So she asks, my supervisor has already mentioned how my bath will evolve. Do these additional tasks need to be added uh, onto the bath? Again, brilliant question. You know, we walk a really fine line here. Uh, Sarah, because we don't want your VAD to change so much that one day you scratch your head and say, I'm not exactly sure if this is the job I signed up for, right? So no, that's a bad deal. We don't want that to happen. However, if it's because for example, what's really hard in a VAT or any work plan is to determine how much time something's going to take. You could be brilliant, you could, or you could be very lucky. Whatever it is, it could move really fast. And so then you're going to work with your supervisor to say, okay, the next step then in this process would be to do X and Y. So to answer your question, yes, it should be added to your VAD. If for no other reason, if another volunteer comes on, another VISTA comes on, they know where you left off. Moreover, the state office who's managing um, your project also knows what's going on, right, and can say, okay, here's how that VAD changed but it's still in line with the goals and objectives that we set up in the first place. So, yes, is the answer. Thank you. Uh, so, Doreen, I hope I'm saying that you right. You keep butchering names. Keep going. Doreen says, Jessica. <laughs> when we're at a networking event, can we use our business cards with a Vista on it? Oh, man, of course. 
as a matter of fact, plaster that room with your business cards. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. I, I think maybe what's behind your question is, is this in any way breaking the Hatch Act? Am I going to get in trouble for doing this? No. As a matter of fact, it's just the opposite. Remember, the only time that um, you're in, in on shaky ground is, is when you are in a political environment. Mm -hmm. uh, the Republicans or the Democrats, it's, it's, it's not bipartisan and it's highly political then you don't want to be identified as a VISTA. All other times, yes, we want people to know you are there and doing good things. Thank you, Patrick. Yep. So we have another question here. Sean, I don't, I've never gotten this question before. Yeah, yeah. So Sean asks, any guidelines when it comes to sharing projects on VISTA campus? I would love to show other classmates what I'm up to, but my gut tells me it might not be prudent to show other people, say, a rough draft of my annual report for the family promise of GF. What are, if he wants to share and to say, hey guys, this is the cool thing I'm doing, what are your gut, I mean, how would you approach that, Patrick? Okay, so I'm going, I'm going to take a guess, and this is the trouble with chat as opposed <laughs> to telephone, yeah. is because I can't test the assumption. True. So, Sean, my guess is part of your concern may be sharing propri proprietary information about your organization, right? Are you sharing too much? Would your organization uh, be unhappy if you were to share that report? If I'm right, uh, and that is your concern, then the easiest way um, to avoid any, any mess is to ask your supervisor, is there anything in here that you think needs to be redacted? Is there anything in here that you think can't be shared in the VISTA community? And look, for the most part, the VISTA campus is the VISTA community. It's outward facing. Uh, there, there are those who come and visit, uh, particularly those who are on Capitol Hill here in D.C. They like to look in and see what are we doing with uh, taxpayers' dollars. Uh, but I would say as long as your organization and your supervisor is comfortable, it's a great learning opportunity for us, uh, your classmates, um, for us who are helping manage and support the program, uh, and for you. And Patrick, Sean did say that you were right on the money, so you had tested that assumption correctly. Thanks, Sean. Um, Sarah, do we have any questions coming in over the phone? We do not have any questions over the phone. I'm telling you, Sarah, it's old school. I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> I heard that. You take that back. <laughs> so, um, so the last question was around um, like posters and business cards. They said, "Hey, is it free? Um, yes. How do we do it?" And so, yes. so yes, the posters are free. We do not offer business cards. We do not have a business card. Oh, you're right. You're right. So we don't have right. that. Um, but posters are also. I sent you all an email about but how to order your But the logos for the the logo is in the, and the templates. Are free. The logos and the templates are free, yeah. So like posters, you can order that from the pub system. Right. Otherwise they gotta print them out themselves somehow. Yeah. Correct. And then they all receive my email about the gear. Right. The gear. Gear up. Gear up. Um so we're right on time. So let's end with one last thing here. So Patrick, let's thank them for participating. Let's talk about what our next webinar is gonna be. What is our next webinar? So our next webinar is going to be the power of telling your story, and it is next Tuesday, the 27th. It never gets old, telling doesn't, your story. It doesn't, and the power of it, why it's important. Are you doing that with the marketing and outreach team? I don't. I think this is Andy's. I think Andy King, our training specialist, is going to be doing that. So I think he was working with our outreach and uh, marketing team. Yeah. yeah, I think so. So how to tell your story, how to... Get that strong message of what you're doing. So volunteer mobilization, uh, partnership development, networking, it's all based on that. Exactly. 
Um, so we want to say thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for um, you know continuing to learn about what you can do as a Vista member, how to increase your skills in Vista. Um, we love hearing from you all, and we're excited that you're on your third week of service here. It's exciting. Thanks for joining us, too. I'm really, really um, honored and enjoy these uh, these webinars a lot. So I, I appreciate you taking the time. And thank you to Eric and Scott um, for doing this as well. So thank you. Um, and that's going to conclude for us today. So have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you on a future webinar. Okay, folks.